obviously I've been following this all, all this very close right from uh, before the last election and and even when Robert Gibbs was still still premier the whole thing that the whole trail that has brought us down to this path today and one of the number one things that I that I hear from people all the time about this is that they they don't feel like anybody got punished while this government likely will at the polls in the next, next election there's really been no other significant punishment for anyone like people were able to destroy records ignore the auditor general not give up any information pretend things didn't happen that that did um and and the people who who, who have talked to me about this are upset like and when you were a committee minister we talked about this and and I said, like, there has to be something significant to show people. There has to be a significant deterrent. And, and <clears throat> like, there has to be, we have to show people that you're not going to get to keep your job, that we're not, it's not a, like the Premier says, maybe he won't come to, he or she won't come to work the next morning. That's not good enough. Like, if we really want to put uh, respect back into government from the outside, if we want the public to respect government elected officials, if we want, to, you know, if we want to put some sort of honor back in the system, there has to be punishment because what you guys did put us here. It wasn't us over here. Like we, we wanted action way back before the last election, and it, and it was continually blocked. Yep, it's about it's about somebody losing their employment. <coughs> we we were continually blocked uh, at public accounts from being able to to get any significant traction on this. It wasn't until the Auditor General was called in that, that we even got a fifth of the way to the bottom of this, and I still think there's more to it. But the fact that nobody was punished for all the things that happened really gives people this feeling that, you know, I read the courts. You see what Nancy Orr does every Thursday down in Georgetown? People go to jail for way less than what you guys did, for way less, all, every time. They, they're, every time people, like, read what Nancy Orr does. People go to jail. That's it. You go in front of Nancy Orr, you break the law, you go to jail. If you're friends of you fellas, nothing happens. But that's how people feel. That's how people feel. And, and we have to be able to show people that we're here for them. It's what the populism uprising is. They're sick of it. And they're sick of being treated like, like it, they'll go to jail for every law that they break, and and well, they should. I'm not I'm not suggesting that that they shouldn't. But this kind of stuff goes unpunished, or or it's a ten thousand dollar fine by somebody who has ten thousand dollars, and who may or may not lose th their job. The, uh, I'm quite disappointed <coughs> in this bill, to be honest. Uh, I'm significantly disappointed in this bill. I don't think. A monetary fine is enough. I really don't. I think, I think, given what this province has been in through and the embarrassment that this, that this government and this premier has drug us through, people need to go to jail. And I don't see ten thousand dollars as a deterrent from the type of things that you guys have allowed to happen. I really don't. So I think that at the very least, that lo losing their their employment, but. I would suggest when, when this bill hits the floor on another day that we should be adding the clauses to say you're going to jail because Nancy Orr puts them in jail for way less than what you fellas let these guys do.